Do you wanna make a really awesome looking shape transition that will make your videos look even cooler? Well, then you're in the right place because in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to make this awesome looking shape transition step by step. Oh, and did I mention that you can make this in only a few minutes? But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly adventure resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on on the newest videos put out, but let's get into it. All right, so now that we're in DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna go ahead and create this shape transition. Also, if you wanna follow along with me, click the link down below to download all of the footage I'm using here for free. So on our timeline, you can see that we have two clips. This first clip right here is what we wanna transition from and the second clip is what we wanna to transition to. What we'll do first is grab the second clip like this and overlay it on top and move back one whole second like this. Now cut this one second section out of both of these clips and then highlight them and right click and go to new fusion clip. You can already see where this is going. Jump into the Fusion tab. Now I know some of you are scared of the Fusion tab and I just wanna say, you've got this. Just go slow through the process. Even if you have to use 0.5 speed, it is totally good. That is how you learn, it's how you grow. So. Let's do it. So in the Fusion tab, you can see that we have our two clips. We have our media in one and our media in two. The first thing we'll do is figure out what the heck media in one is. So I can hit this little button right here and just put it in my right viewer. And clearly that is the city. So I'm gonna hit F2 and rename this city. And then because you know this has to be the building, I'm gonna rename it building. Once we've done that, I'm gonna click on my merge node right here and just delete it. Get that out of here. And instead, I'm gonna hit control and space bar and type in dissolve and add that in and connect both of our nodes to that. So now we have this dissolve node acting just like our merge node. And there is a huge reason for that. And I'll explain that in a second. First, I'm gonna hover over the inputs right here. You can see that our first clip is actually the background and our second clip is the foreground. So we're gonna wanna switch that. Click on the dissolve node and hit control T and you can see that the inputs will actually change. So now this first clip is the foreground and the second clip is the background. Now with the dissolve node selected, we're going to go into the inspector tab and right click on background slash foreground and go down to expression. Now just copy and paste this expression into this expression area right here. Don't worry, it's in the description because I'm not asking you to do any math here. I hate math so much. I have a guy for it. What this expression does is it takes the overall length of your fusion clip and it transitions from our first clip to the second clip exactly halfway through the fusion composition. So now that we've got this clip switching right here, what we're gonna do is put our playhead on frame zero, click on our first clip, and then add in a transform node just like this. Now in the inspector tab under center, I'm gonna actually add in a keyframe right here and then move all the way to the end of the clip just like this. So now I'm just gonna turn off my single viewer because honestly, I don't need it. Then under frame 23, I'm gonna type in 2.5. So now if we look it over, I mean, it's just horrible. Like never use something like this. So what we're gonna do is copy this transform node right here using control C. And then on the second node right here, we're gonna click on it and hit control shift V. This is gonna place an instance transform. What that means is that anything you do to this right here will happen also to this one. So instancing is in a sense like follow the leader. So now if you watch this, you can see that it kind of just is off the page altogether. So what we're gonna do is under our transform one, we're gonna go to edges and we're gonna change it from canvas to wrap. So now once our frame is completely off, you can see that it just starts over again like this. That's pretty cool, right? But now we need to make it super smooth because that thing, that's freaking ugly. So in the spline tab up here, I'm going to turn on my transform node and then hit fit to zoom like this. Now I'm gonna highlight both keyframes like this and hit S and then hit control T to open up the ease in and ease out. Now just move up the ease in to 75 and the ease out to 75. And then you're good, close out of the spline tab. So now if we take a look at it, it looks so much better. But you may be saying to yourself, that's all nice and though, but Billy, where the heck is that shape? I got you. In the media pool, I'm gonna grab my shape and drag it down. Next, we'll just take the output of the shape and connect it to the blue triangle on both the transform and the instance transform like this. And if 
I just move this node over, you can see that it is definitely connected to both. Now you can see the shape right here. And if we want to make it bigger, we can always click on the shape just like this and add in another transform to it. And then under size, just bring it up just like this. Now, if we take a look at it, you can see that the transition actually just happens inside of the shape and, you know, the rest of it doesn't transition at all. So we're just going to give ourselves a little space like this and click on the transform node and hit control C. And once again, we're going to paste an instant copy of this transform node on both the city and the building, but before the shape input right here. To do that, I'm going to hit control shift and V and move down to the building and do the same thing. Now you'll see that inside the shape, and outside the shape are moving. So if you don't like these hard edges right here, you can always go up to this transform right here and go to edges. And instead of wrap, you can do mirror. And it's gonna hide that edge by mirroring the video. And you can also add motion blur under the settings right here and just move down to motion blur. And you can bring up the quality to like, you know, six or seven like that. And you can bring down the shutter angle because honestly, that's a lot. But personally, I kind of like it without the motion blur and I like it on the wrap just because that like weird look that it gives you. So if you want to use this transition over and over and over again, I got you. I just created a drag and drop shape transition pack, which comes with nine different shapes moving in eight different directions. You literally just drag out the transition and place it between the two clips where you want there to be a transition. It is that simple. So if you want this pack, click the link down below and get it today. Anyways, if you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share it with your friends so that they can put this transition in their videos too. So if you want more videos like this, click on the top for a playlist with all of my Dimension Resolve tutorials or click on the bottom for a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.